devised a way to notate turntable performance, and we're going to talk about it. So, let's turn it over a little bit. Okay. Alright, um, myself, I've been in a system of transcribing. DJ music, that's all from the DJ music, from mixing in clubs all the way to, to turntables, DJ scratching. And I collaborated, I collaborated with Ethan and Bowden, a graphic design, I mean an industrial designer, and uh, John Carlucci, the director of Battle Sounds, and we um, we both had two similar, very similar systems that were based on the same principles, so we just joined our system together and we um, and in our collaboration we uh, created System called a turntable transcription methodology, and this is a system that's uh, it's a, it's a form of, of musical notation that that um, that furthers and furbishes uh, communication between DJs and even between non-DJ musicians um, and DJs, so that that uh, higher levels of composition and orchestration can be you know achieved through DJing. Because as it stands right now, um, DJ, DJing in itself has been passed down through. And it's, and it's simply been a dialect, whereas now, um, with the actual visual, visual means of representation, people can actually communicate scratches and, and sets and different types of techniques through, um, through non-verbal means and non-visual means. They can actually, you know, um, send transcriptions over the internet um, and do, I mean, do all types of things. Like, the, the, the limits to the, the system, um, I mean, are really far in the sense that Traditionally, turntables have been seen as as an instrument to just like um, well, well, turntables have been traditionally been seen as an instrument that's to stabilize a party, really. Um, so the the idea of a DJ, you know, goes as far from Howard Stern to people at the weddings to you know DJs at the clubs. But with the whole turntablist movement, um, I call myself a turntablist, and some of these other DJs out there call themselves turntablists because. They don't. They, they still feel as though they're DJs, but but they feel as though they're doing performance music. So right now, in the past ten years, it's been a shift from in DJing from from strictly uh, club and, and dance oriented music to actual performance music. So you've got DJs performing, you know, having ensembles and quartets and and, and, and doing uh, scratches and compositions strictly for you know um, strictly for for musicality and not just for uh, laying the ground for a party and keeping people happy, even though those are still musicians to them. So, um, <clears throat> so first, I'm going to start out and, and go through the uh, go through the mathematics behind the system, because <clears throat> really the system the system is based on like a lot of uh, simple trigonometry principles, and we take those those uh, simple mathematical um, formulas and algorithms and, and translate that into to more easily uh, easily read symbolic um, symbolic notation. If, 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 
people don't know what a record really is, it's, it's just a, it's just an audio file that's just spun all the way around, all the way into the into the center of the record. So it's like a spiral going all the way around it. So so um, for for any sample that's on the record, it can be broken down to a number of degrees. So. So it's like, I can track this record, I can track this sound right here. That, that, that sample is, um, can be represented by, by theta, which is, you know, the Greek um, representation of degrees, and, and say that's, you know, 60 degrees, and I can say that that's how long that sample is. So we take that basic idea, and we um, saying that you can, as you can see here, we have the fresh sample, and, and, here, in, th in this example, the fresh sample represents, uh, just happens to be 75 degrees. And that means it'll always be 75 degrees no matter how fast you're moving the, the table, no matter what's really happening. Uh, let me open this second page up. This is better. Um, so right here, we take theta and we graph that over time. Okay. So so what this means is that in, in standard you know musical notation, Western music, you know um, we tend to we, we tend to place um, we tend to place notes in, in bundles and 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 actually quantify them with a symbol and say this is a sixteenth note, this is this is you know eighth note, whatever. But with our system, we're 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 doing it more like like you have sequencing programs and computers and, and MIDI files and things like that where, where it's actually dealing with intervals of time rather than, uh, rather than an actual note. So, because that, the, the, the reason why, this is the main reason why scratching can't really be notated with, with standard Western music. You can, but you, there's, there's a million nuances to scratching that really can't be, um, and DJing in general, that really can't be described by, by standard Western music. So, <clears throat> so, the, the basic idea of, of what DJs are doing is they're, they're cutting and pasting and they're manipulating sound just like you're cutting and pasting the computer. So, um, <clears throat> so our notation represents scratching and DJing through, through, um, through inter using intervals of time as opposed to, to, to bundles of time. So, <clears throat> so we're right here on the, on the Y axis we're graphing theta and here on the X axis we're graphing time. Okay, and um, this, these graphs here are actually from the system that I developed before I collaborated uh, with of my partners in the turntable transcription methodology. But, okay, in this example right here, you can see where I'm pointing to. I have uh, 90 degrees at the top right here. Let me, actually I can't zoom in. Um, I've got 90 degrees at the top right here and I've got zero degrees at the bottom. So this is the origin right here, kind of. And as you go to the right, you can see that this is, this is time. And as you go upwards, this is degree. So really, so really what it breaks down to is that, that scratching is, is really, is really the, the, the change in degrees, the, <clears throat> the displacement of any particular point which you, which you um, start measuring from. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so right here, this is actually part of the booklet. And in the booklet, we don't really go into a lot of mathematics behind it, um, which I'm going to do today, actually. Um, so right, right here, you can see that, right here, you can see that, that, okay, here we have this graph here, and this is the rotation of the record, you know, over the, over the time that takes, transpires. And... We use standard 4-4, four, four, but you don't, you, know, you don't have to. You can, you can divide this graph up into any number of time signatures, anything you want. But um, as a standard, um, we, just, we just put each, each, one of these, uh, each one of these blocks here represents 1 16th note. And you can see this, this is the end of, this is a whole measure right here. And this is one beat, one measure, whole note. 
Can everybody see this? <clears throat> this, what? Excuse me? Oh, zoom out. I'm <clears throat> All right. Yeah, this is kind of it's kind of hard to see this the thick black line is in this format in this PDF format. But uh, yeah, so 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 if you have this uh, a record and it has a sample uh, a sample on it, that that degree. So let's say that we have fresh before that equal seventy five degrees. So let's say um, f the when you play that sample when you play fresh out. Bass. Well, this is bass. Let's use bass. Okay, and you play bass, bass out. Let's say that just took, um, let's say that took exactly one beat. You would say that over that one beat, you would say that that over over one beat of time, this this sample went however many degrees it is. So, okay, in this case we have fresh, we have the fresh sample, and in this case it's let's see, one, two, three, four, five. We have it here as, as five increments, and, 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 we, and these increments aren't really labeled. You can label them however you want. Um, but let's just say these are, this, is, uh, this is actually 50 degrees. So, so, so fresh is 50 degrees long. It's going five increments right here. And over time, right here, over time, if everybody can see where I'm moving, this is the time's going this direction. Over time it goes one, two, three, four, Five sixteenth notes, or so. I mean, that's that's how long the, the sample is. So if you speed up the sample, it's gonna. This this is what will happen. If you speed up the record, like here it is at normal speed, right? Okay, and then we have for that for that um, sample to come out, we're, we're slowing down the speed of the sample, um, and the slope is going to change. The slope is going to become less steep, and the steeper it becomes. <clears throat> As you can as you can see right here, the steeper it becomes, the uh, the the less amount of time that the sample um, takes to transpire. So basically, so basically, what it works out to <clears throat> basically what it works out to is that any forward movement on the record in our in our notation, any forward movement. Is, is anything that has a positive slope, anything that's, that's moving up. So in this example, um, it has a positive, fresh has a positive slope because, because it's going from, from the beginning of the sample and it's going to the end of the sample over time. Now if it's going from the end of the sample and, and it's going back uh, to the beginning of the sample over that same period of time, it'd have a negative slope right here because it's starting at the end of the sample because where, wherever you're, whatever point you're starting from is starting here at the end of the sample and it's, and it's going towards the, the beginning of it so the slope is going to be um, it's going to be a negative slope <clears throat> and, and the same goes for the speed of it going backwards so any, any, any rotation that's, that's forward like the record going forward base, this, this will have a positive slope so it'll just be a line that says base I mean you don't have to write anything under. Right here we, we've just written fresh on the line just as an example. But but anything that's going forward, any any um, clockwise rotation of the actually any counterclockwise I mean clockwise rotation of the record is going to be a positive slope. And then conversely any backwards no, uh, rotation of the record is going to be a negative slope. So if I were to play the sample out over time and then hold it for for any given amount of time, there wouldn't be any slope, and it would just you just have a line that goes across um, for however long uh, amount of time that you actually hold it. As you can see in this example right here. So in this example, in this example, um, fresh is played a little bit, and then and then somebody holds it for for uh, for a period of time, and then lets it go again, and it plays out. <clears throat> and then, so that means, so, so basically positive slope going upwards, that's the record playing forward, and then downwards is the record going backwards. And if it's, if it's just a plan, if it has no slope at all, that means the record's just being held still. And, and a completely vertical line, like infinite slope, that's, that's impossible really, because the record can't 
go, the director can't go a matter of distance in no time at all, so. <clears throat> so there's certain, so certain, this, you got your hand raised? Uh-huh. Well, the degrees are always going to be the same. The arc length is, is what you're talking about. The arc length of the, of the thing, will, of course, will always be changing as you, as you get in, into the record, but the degrees won't change. So, the, so and we don't, we, at first I thought of doing it like that, of using the arc length, but the arc length is, is, is always changing. Um, so it's actually, so you're just using the degrees, so the degrees aren't changing, but the, but the arc, actual arc length is changing. So, yeah, that, so you're, you're kind of right. But, but that's why we don't use the arc length, we use degree. <clears throat> All right, and so that means normal, that means normal oscillation. If I'm going like this, just normal oscillation, that's just, just normal oscillation, that can be represented by a sine wave or a cosine wave, just a, a wave in general because it's going back and forth. And <clears throat> let me show this one second. Does anybody have any questions while we're... Western music, and and uh, and we looked at you know other notations of the past. I mean, you know, there's a lot of postmodernists, modernists, all types of composers that have been you know coming up with alternate systems of of of, of notating music, and, and a lot of them have been based on using actually using um, time as uh, as as a distance instead of just you know using you know a single note. And there's you know a lot of you know different notation. I mean, there's a whole myriad of different notations out there. So, are you saying that you looked to those when you were doing this, or I'm asking, like, was there anything in particular that you tried to, you know, use when you were modeling this, or is this something that you basically kind of figured out on your own? I mean, like, yeah, that's it. Math. It was figured, yeah, figured out on our own, and but using using just visual icons from the past to to help to help it. I mean, aesthetically and help things. Uh, Oh no! I, I, I can once I get towards the end of, of what I'm doing, there'll be things that that look more similar. I mean, just you know, um, I mean, really, I mean, just the, the 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 structure of the staff, you know, just so that things can be incorporated. So that I mean, because really, what we're looking for and looking towards is for this to be incorporated into into technologies and computer technologies and and notational systems to have you know turntables that you can scratch and and and. And just like with MIDI sequencing programs, you'd be able to um, re record those things. So we, we we wanted to be able to integrate. I mean, we, we've designed it to look similar to Western things, so we can integrate it within Western music. I mean, because it's a part of Western music. So, but I mean, we devised this system completely ourselves. So it's not. So I mean, it's really more of the aesthetic things and and practical utility things and and visual things that we we look towards outside influences to. To, uh, to fashion this after. 
Okay. We'll put it. I can't seem to find this page, but uh, ah, here we go. Oh yeah, I'll get to all that. So right, I'm just going to start off with, with basic mathematical things and how the system was devised, and then I'm going to get to actual techniques and things like that. Okay, so here's uh, so I'll, I'll start rushing kind of. Um, here, here, what we have right here is is. Like I was saying, if you're doing normal oscillation, you know, it, um, all scratches really are, are composed of just, are, are, can be represented by waves. Because if you didn't have, the, if without fader movements and without cutoffs and things like that, all scratches underneath, underlying all those scratches, whatever the DJ is doing, there's, there's, it's always going back and forth. And so there's just always going to be just waves of different periods or different, you know, amplitudes. Um, And so, so basically, um, the movement of, of the record can be categorized in three major three major types. Um, there's there's linear um, linear movement, exponential, and logarithmic. So so linear would just be you know um, is 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 best represented by just normal velocity in that. Bass, pump it up loud, fill the bass. Okay, so right now the record is 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 moving at a like when I just let it play like this, the record's moving at a at a at a constant speed. It's it's whatever whatever the speed is, it's it's moving at a constant speed. So you hear um you know you you'll hear a constant pitch if it's a constant noise because the you don't want to forget either that the turntable has infinite timbre because it can because being that it's pre-recorded music, you know, you, you can be manipulating any type of sample from, you know, from the, the highest frequencies to the lowest frequencies to any type of noise with any type, any type of texture. But, so let's just say that the note, let's just say that this is a uh, constant pitch right here. Uh, um, when it moves at a, like we have in this example, when it moves at a, at a linear rate, it's gonna have a, it's gonna have a one-to-one -one ratio of the same noise. But if it moves, you know, at a, exponentially, like that's I, I'm 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 the the speed my speed is increasing exponentially when I'm when I'm pushing on the record. So it, so the so the the pitch is gonna is gonna do the same and the same with same with uh, like logarithmic and de deceleration. Um, it's gonna go. Okay, and it's the, the, the pitch is gonna is gonna go down, you know, um, at, at the same rate that that the speed is moving. Because really, um, with the turntable, the, um, with with things in general, the, the the pitch of the actual turntable is the exact same as its speed, and and they're all um, they're all proportional to each other. <clears throat> Okay, and if, I'm, if it's going backwards, it's the same thing. You know, I can do, go backwards at a constant rate, and then at an exponential rate, and then at a um, logarithmic rate, and go like that. But, uh, and so all three of those make different noises. But really, without the fader, so what I'm trying to explain is that really without the fader, all those noises, it's just, it, they're all just different, different ways of, 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 different, of different sizes. And, and all those waves can be broken down into an S-curve. Like those, those, th those three types of basic scratches that I just explained to you that are up there can all, are, all compose um, the S-curve. 
right here. And as you see, the bottom of the S curve is is uh, is acceleration, and you can see that it's, it's exponential growth at the the very bottom of the of the movement. At the very beginning of the movement, it's exponential, and as it's in in the middle point of going like if you're going back and forth. At its middle point, it's it's somewhere near constant because when you're scratching, you can never really have um, a perfect constant, a constant pitch or a constant movement because because only a machine can do that, and and you'll never be able to perfectly move it at an exact one-to-one -one ratio. So it's just going to be near constant growth, and <clears throat> and at the at the very top of the S curve, you can see that it's that's decelerating because you're about to come on your your um, the DJ is about to start his backwards movement. So, so like this S curve would look like this. What? I mean, it would sound like this. So, so, so and then if you do the, this same S curve and you, and you flipped it over and did it backwards, it would just be, and then backwards would be. So, so that and that completes the, a, a cycle of a, of a basic scratch. So, so really, it's it's all scratches can be broken down in ways it can be broken down in these three major parts. And when people use the fader, what they're doing is they're they're cutting off a, um, a certain portion of this so that you only hear which one you want to hear. Like when I was um, giving you all the example of the exponential and the logarithmic and all those other things at first, I was cutting off all all the other t the other two. So that you couldn't hear it, and that's what so that's what the fader is used for. So when you hear me just go like, there, there were there were the other the other types of scratches were were there, but they were hidden from the from the viewer because because if there wasn't a fader, it would just you know all sound like this. So so what the view so what the fader is doing really is is masking um, either. All of those, all of those elements, or one of them, or two of them, or, or three of them, and 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 you know, and from that, you know, there's a million scratches that can be made. So and so now I like to talk about the fader. Really, the fader. Um, there's 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 two major types of faders, and and what what faders do, like I've just explained, is serve to cut off these sounds. You know, selectively cut off the sounds that you. Don't want the audience to hear, and the and the ones that you do want them to hear, and the the three types of faders. I mean, the two types of faders basically are basically instantaneous faders, and then faders that are more gradual, that have more gradual um, cutoff rates. So, um, the first, the most commonly used type of fader is the, is the cross fader. Get em. And the, the cross fader, it's 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 very close to being, um, you know, uh, nearly instantaneous cutoff. But 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 the the way that it tapers the sound is is it, it has it has a curve to it so that you don't hear a clipping. And like if you're if you if you know anything about cutting samples or anything like that, um, if you cut it off um, too abruptly, the the sound will um, will have a click to it. And and the reason that doesn't happen with the crossfader is because it has because it doesn't um, when the DJ when the DJ turns this on the switch on it doesn't just cut on automatically it, it the volume um, increases just a little bit it increases increases gradually but with the transformer switch it actually does do that actually instantaneously it's a it's an on and off it's an on and off cut like. The, 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 it's a much sharper cut. So, so really, what I'm trying to explain is all these different faders and different switches. They all have have different um, different sounds. So, like, I'll, I'll do a scratch with with uh, the cross fader right here. Um, okay, and and it has that sound, but I'll do that same scratch. And, and since I was using, uh, it might not have sounded different to you all, but since I was using a different fader, like um, different faders have different rates of, of, of ratios of, of change in volume um, um, relative to, uh, to how far you move it. So they just have different 
rates of cutoff, and, and DJs use you know treble knobs and bass switches, and all, and all those things are involved in the notation too. Because in, any type of switch, whether it's an effect or whether it's whether it's um, um, any type of transition over time, is 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 notated. Okay. And this and this right here is just the point of inflection. That's just where. Where where the essential um, elements of the scratch, like the three essential ones that I talked about before, where they change. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Excuse me. Do I think more complex notes? Um, okay, one second. Okay, I'm going to go back to the booklet. Okay, so like this example, right? This example right here. This is an example in the booklet. It's, it's. You can see that the, the wave is oscillating back and forth, and then the line just goes straight. So that would sound like this. It would be like because it's, it's going back and forth. It's oscillating back and forth like this, and then it's being let go, and you can see that the line carries out. And gets to and gets to finish the sample. So in our notation, we put, we you write the sample. You write the sample right here, uh, uh, right here to the left. And, and here's this is kind of like a sample bank right here, where where you have um, you know this sample one, sample two. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a sample two. You can you can put in, in that in that section. You can put one measure. To, like if you're if you're actually just um, playing out a song. Um, you can just put one measure in there, and and it will, and that distance will represent one measure in the song, okay? And you, you and the reason why I use that for is because let's say I just play this record out, and it just keeps on going. The line will go off the page. So so what we use it in, in the same light that you use in trigonometry, using quadrants and sectors, so that once it goes past the line, it starts back again at the bottom but you notate that it's in the next that it's in the next measure or in the next sector or the next quadrant so so if it's a really really long sample and it goes past your 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 um your range it's going to start back again at the at at the beginning or or wherever you want however you have it um how however you define your 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 staff your musical staff <clears throat> So right, so right here is an example of this is just a beat that's being played, and you see that it has a, it has, the the line is just going across and it's going across and it's, and and that means it's just it's just being played and it's starting back again at in the next sector which and, and in this and in, in this example it says you can see it says one measure it just says one measure so that means each measure of this beat is equivalent to the is 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 is, is the length of this actual. Uh, of this graph. Oh, what's your question? Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We, we've, okay. Um, all right, then. Um, Okay, yeah, like I said before, um, let me see, let me actually, let me actually open this up. Uh, okay, there's, there's basic techniques that I can go through, um, I'm not gonna, I don't have time to do all of them that, that DJs use in the repertoire, and one of them is, is called, I mean, one of the major ones is mixing, and mixing involves just 
is, is just t- is t- involves taking two or more beats and, and, and making them so that they're the same speed so that they can overlap on top of each other without any type of rhythmic dissonance. And, and a, another type is backspinning, and that's when, some, when a DJ is actually looping a segment of a song by playing one with one turntable and then in, in rhythmic time bringing the next one in um, bringing the next one in and then keep on, keep on going back and forth by, by playing, the, playing this one sample here, then playing the next sample and playing the next sample and that's, you know, and that's called uh, backspinning. So here, here we have the notation for backspinning. If you have um, more, I mean similar to, similar to, to Western notation, you have, you know, if you have a piano with, you know, with using two hands or using more than one hand or using more than one instrument, um, there's two staffs. One staff represents one turntable, and the other staff represents the other turntable. So you can have, you know, as many you can have 50 turntables. You can have uh, as many staffs as you want. You can have, you know, as many um, pieces as you want. So writing scores has all the same principles and 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 uh, nuances. Let it hit him. Off the vibe. And then there's something called drumming, where a DJ, they, they take, there's a sample of a kick and a snare like this. So it's just a sample of a kick and a snare, followed by a snare. And they, and they reconstruct it. Because uh, that's basically what all, all DJing is, is just reconstructing and, and re-manipulating and, and replacing um, 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 pre-recorded sample sound. So they... So this is called drumming, like... So that's, so, so that's just taking that kick and that snare and replacing them in different ways and, and being able to create whatever type of patterns that, that you want from, from those um, pre-recorded sounds. And we have... Uh, um, and, those symb- and those symbols can be represented by, by things that we have in our book, and, and, and I'll, be able to, I'll pass those out. So, so with so with this idea, like what's happened in the past ten years is that there's been DJs, ensembles, and crews, and bands that have formed that that one DJ will play. I mean, like like one DJ will just play the drums, and another DJ will will have a, a, a sound of just a tone, a bass tone, and they'll play the bass. And they'll use the pitch control on the, on the turntable, which is the speed control, and that'll that changes the pitch. And they'll, they'll, and they'll that that one turntable will be the bass, and another turn pa- turntable will be the the lead vocal. Um, is this is this hooked up? Yeah. Oh, it's hooked up the volume. Yeah, it, it example there's three there's three parts and 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 um which you say actually one of them had like a, a, a wah pedal on one of the on one of the turntables but you know all those all three of those DJs they just they were playing a song but and, and they're using pre-recorded parts but none of, none of the parts that they were playing were more than you know a second long so so none of those DJs were just letting a, a record play and they were scratching over it they were all completely creating that one of the DJs was creating the beat one was playing the the uh, the, the trumpet type sample and the other one was playing the, the vocal sample of the, the actual vocal sound that was being scratched so so what, so what DJs are doing these days is is, is um, they're they're breaking down beats to the smallest levels um, you know, and they're and they're taking those beats and they're and they're completely creating completely new compositions. And you know, so I mean, people still don't, really don't see the uh, 
people, a lot of people still don't understand the musicality of, of, of turntablism and, and really understand what they're doing, but DJs right now are, are you know, creating, you know, ensembles and, and creating pieces, but as it stands now, just these things haven't been written down and they've, they've all been through an oral tradition and, 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 you know, through visual means and just through word of mouth. <clears throat> but, but also, um, beyond that, uh, the turntable is actually able to play any note, you know, that almost any instrument can play in, in the sense that the, the, turn, the turntable can conduct live um, transposing, live transposition. So just like, you, like if you understand um, sampling on, on a keyboard, um, you, when you take a sample and you change, the, and you change the, uh, the speed of that sample, like if you speed it up without using a pitch shifter or correct, um, harmonic correct or whatever, when you speed up things, you know, the, the pitch tends to go up and when you slow them down, the pitch goes down. So since the turntable is, is a velocity acceleration based instrument, it can play any pitch. So basically, So basically, um, in this booklet, this is just version 1.0 of this booklet, and we don't go into um, really a lot of complex musical notation, um, but um, DJs can actually play scales and actually be able to, to, to do any note just through changing the pitch. And let me see. <clears throat> Turntables um, um, are able to speed up, you know, from around eight percent to, to like plus plus or minus eight percent or plus or minus ten percent. But right now, they're, so and that and that only gives turntables really the ability to to use about maybe like two steps. But um, right now, there's more turntables that are being invented that that can go like plus and minus fifty or whatever. And 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 pretty soon, within the next few years, DJs will have uh, on the pitch control. DJs will be able to have a, a full scale. And so right now, there's only, you know, there's only a couple of notes. <clears throat> and right now, I'm actually going to show you um, translation. Let me see. Ooh. Okay, the first thing you have to understand is that for, for any... For for any distance, like for like, like just like in regular music, um, for any wavelength, you know, twice that wavelength is going to be in general like an octave up, and and um, for, for so for the examples that we've been using, like fresh, like when it was seventy five degrees, we call that the the sample length. So for any particular sample length, that sample length times two, in in in, in most practical purposes, that that sample length times two in general is going to be an octave up. So, so, so let's say I, so let's say I go from, I mean, it, dep it depends on the, the, the actual, you know, like, sinusoidal components of the actual um, sample that you're cutting, but, but let's just say everything works out in, 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 in perfect theory. Um, 
you know, let's say you go, if somebody scratches a sample and they're going from zero to, to 75 degrees in a certain amount of, in, in, in one beat, let's say, um, it'll, have, it'll have whatever sound to it. And if they go from zero to 150 degrees using that same sample, and in oh, in that same amount of time, it's it's going to have a, a a higher slope, and it's going to be twice as it's going to be a, this is twice as fast. It's going to be in general octave up. So I mean, they're, they're, so like I have my turntable. Um, I don't have an example of it here, but uh, divided into degrees, and actually um, having frets on a turntable so that you can see you see distances and, and be able to actually see the ratios. Because as it stands now, turntables are really fretless, and that 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 if a DJ is if the DJ is trying to um, sc actually scratch different notes, there is, 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 it all has to be done really by ear, and 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 each note has its own um, you know set of proportions to it. So I'm gonna give you an example that's just a, more of a theoretical example, but I mean it does work, it, it works it works for all for all music. Um, Right here, uh, I can't zoom in. Okay, but right here, as you can see, this 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 particular sample went from zero to eighty degrees, and let's say a B, you know, and let's say that was C, you know, and this it goes from, and then if that same sample goes from zero to one hundred and sixty degrees in that same amount of time, you know, be the next octave up, and 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 so on. Um, but I mean, it also depends on what note the actual turntable. What, what note that the actual sound is too for the for these things to really work so so right now there's right now there's no turntables i mean in, right now battle records the records that have um pre recorded sounds in it that are that are designed for djs for turntables djs aren't really in key aren't created in key or in tune but pretty soon they will be um so i mean so once that's done you know people can actually will actually be able to you know scratch scales and play scales and and you know, play with the best of them. And people can do that now, but it's but there's a lot there's a lot more um, um, technological barriers that actually are being um, uh, amended right now. Okay, so right here, I just have like just have kind of an example. Um, like let's say let's say for us let's say that that. If I move the uh, move the sample from zero to, to ten degrees in one beat, let's say that it just happened to be um, you know B C and it happened to be a you know I'm a, now in this example I'm I'm, I'm breaking down um, a whole wavelength into into its parts and so so in this example every uh, um, every every ten degrees um, um, correlates to just a half a step so. You know, so really, <clears throat> so so really, you know, turntables. You know, you can actually scratch notes. And you can, um, and this is a a very hard skill to actually do to be able to you know move it that perfectly. You know, in a, in amount of time. But but you know, DJs are doing it, and and it's you know the the art form right now is 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 progressing at a very very rapid very very rapid rate. And you know, there's new new more and more compositions coming out every day. <clears throat> So basically, in this example, I just kind of have I have a, a um, <clears throat> just showing correlation between pitch and speed, really, and and the distance it travels in in time, and <clears throat> so I mean yeah. So right now, turntables don't have markings on it so that DJs can know where to go, and and also each different sound they use are going to have different ratios and different proportions. But does anyone have any questions? All right, get this next picture up. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's like, let me get up. And, and somebody else was asking about um, <clears throat> about do we have any examples of notation? But actually, let me play this quick time first. This was actually an NYU event where we had we had a completely improv improvisational um, group of like eight. Um, turntablists and they were just, you know, um, they were creating
really just sorted through there, but but really, um, I mean, that, that was that was I mean, a completely impro improvisational um, piece. And the other piece I showed you before was was actually was was all memorized. Um, and I'm sure they wrote down some stuff too, but it was all all um, that was a pre-orchestrated um, piece, the one that I had showed you before. And they so they had memorized that piece, and they do that piece. Those are the uh, Invisible Scratch Pickles, their group, and they um, and they've actually uh, you know done that piece. Um, you know, a lot of times, and they've, and it's, they spin is actually memor in, in, in memorization, and with our system, you know, this, this reduces that, that, that time of, of having to memorize their whole routines that are very, very precise. Um, and I'll, I'll actually, okay. We're about out of time. Okay. So just, uh, yeah, play this example. Okay, I, yeah, I'm going to actually show this piece. Uh, let's see, Browse. And, uh, <clears throat> sign out when, when we're done. Uh, let me see. Okay, uh, here's here's the actual piece. Let's see, we actually translated because this was a piece that uh, this was a piece that was done by by uh, um, DJ Rob Swift from New York uh, of the Executioners, and this piece was you know a highly highly orchestrated piece, and he and he had memorized this whole piece and and and. And he does this piece everywhere, but he had, this was never, um, you know, completely notated. And so we took we took that piece and we we notated and we transcribed it using our using our system. <clears throat> so you're going to side beat this place right now? Oh, <laughs> uh, I could, but but actually I don't have the the samples because like right here in, in this and in, uh, in in this part of the. Uh, this part of the the the, uh, the, the staff, you put um, your reference and you put you know what record you're using, where to find that sample. So if somebody wants to recreate that, well, but no, no, I, I I can I might be able to find that sample, but I'm really strapped for time. And but plus, I mean, it's a very it's you can, you can go as long as you want. Like, people know if they have somewhere to be. They, like okay, okay. Well, can you vocalize it? Okay, so like so <laughs> so right here. Um, there's, there's, there's. You can see that there's three different samples used in this, um, used in this piece, basically. Um, there's scratching. What is it? Uh, and this is a representation of just a, of a kick, of a, of a, the sound of an actual sample of a kick. Like you could write, you know, the kick and how long it is, but, but to make things even shorter, it's just a, it's just a um, notation for a kick symbol. Okay, so right here, they're using the first sample, which is right here, which is scratching. And it's going scratching, and then this kick is playing right here. So it goes scratching, boom, and then it goes scratch, chit chit. Does everybody see that? Because this, you can see that um, this line starts right here, and it whoops, and it correlates all the way over to this, and it's going so 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 this one is playing all almost all the way through, and it's going scratch chit, and this one. This line right here, the second one is going shit, and so is this one's going. So it's like scratch shit shit, and then this is scratch scratching. <clears throat> oh yes, yeah, actually, um, let me show this last thing. Uh, Advanced, <clears throat> open. Okay, there's. Um, we have. A, um, we 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 use this um, to, to represent a click. There's there's two types of things. I forgot to say. There's two types of things. There's clicks and there's a cut. Now a cut is when somebody when a DJ is playing a song. <laughs> So a cut would be like if sound is playing like this, and you, and you turn it off, and that's so you're cutting the sound. But a click um, is also a technique that's used, and 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 that's represented by by a black dot, meaning that it really takes up no space and time, um, but but it's just an instantaneous um, t um, tapping of the actual fader and bouncing back. So the fader's only really off for an instantaneous second, but then it comes right back on. So like... So, 
So, so when I'm doing that, it sounds like I'm going like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But really, I'm I'm only moving this record like this. I'm only moving like that. But the click with with the click, I'm 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 using that to using that click to to place a little division mark and 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 make it and increase the amount of of, of scratches. So that's why DJs can go like. DJs can do stuff like that, and I'm really only going that fast, but I'm, I'm, I'm cutting the, the sound up into so many um, portions that it sounds like I'm doing a lot, of, a lot of things. So, does that answer your question? What was the question again? <laughs> You're saying like crabs? Yeah. Well, yeah, there's a technique called crabbing where DJs. Count it up. So DJs use more than you do things than triple. So we have notation for all these different things, like like that. When when you're doing three things that when it's three clicks at once, this. Well, this is a four finger crab. You see that there's four dots there and there's four clicks. And and you can use four fingers. You can use three fingers. <laughs> That's basically it. So, so from that, so from all these different ways you can cut them up, um, you can create. There's, you know, there's infinite numbers of scratches, and there's different, and each different scratch um, has has different sounds, and 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 you know, like I can say this is not just a crescendo, but I'm doing this crescendo starting at you know this particular volume and ending at this particular volume, or I'm doing this, you know, or this or this crescendo is more of an exponential crescendo. I'm changing the volume, um, you know, at an exponential rate or or at a logarithmic rate, so so um, the, so that those fall, you know, underneath the staff and in a in similar place, similar to Western music, but it's actually more complex, just because um, scratching is about using the volume, um, changing the brightness and changing the volume and changing all these things. Um, so right, so right here, <clears throat> um, and. A, fl a flare, you know, would sound like this. So, if somebody wanted me to side read. And so, so this in this flare, in the composition of this flare, the black dot means um, that I'm I'm clicking at that at the point in time that's that's adjacent to it on the on the on the x axis, and the second black dot means the same thing. So, and you can see that in in one movement. There is a back in, in, in this one scratch. There's a backwards and forwards movement. So you can see this just this one wave, this one bump. Um, that's just like. But when I add those two black dots, there are those clicks. That that's what that's what it sounds like. And all these scratches right here are separated by these white um, these white um, circles, and those are. Those represent just open fader position, and those are just to separate scratches from each other. Because um, um, sc scratches, when you when you join all of them together, they could eventually look like a whole bunch of clicks, which you wouldn't be able to really um, decipher. You, you really wouldn't be able to decipher what's really going on. With, with what? Mixing it at going in reverse. Like that. You know, just like spinning back. Oh, I mean, just like. like. Yeah. 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 Well, well, one, the one, the beat would be just be going. The, the the line would just like like remember I was showing before how you just put one measure inside of uh, the sample the sample bank. 
Well, one line would just be the, it, they'd be the exact same lines, but but yeah, like that exactly, yeah. But it'd be it'd be it'd be notated on two separate turntables. So on turntable one, the line is going at this particular angle. The other one, the line is going at that exact um, same angle. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in the in the composer's notes, you can put all all different types of, you know, what what things you want specified. And here's a, just the last little quick time of of at this NYU event of of somebody uh, actually doing a juggling routine. And this is actually taking a beat and re-manipulating it, taking two existing beats on two table two turntables and and re-manipulating those. I accept. <clears throat> uh, I don't know who's gonna play. <laughs> In that example, the, the, the DJs were taking, you know, um, beats from two, two, uh, from two records and they're restructuring it. And, and just like if you were, um, you know, just like a lot of jungle artists do or whatever, you... you it depends on the information that's there, too. Do you have, like, something else that's more substantial? I'm saying, like, what you were using to show us, the program, it's got these examples in it, but it seemed like you had a lot of other... Other things, my other yeah. writing. Yeah, because this is his version. Version 1.0, right. this is just version 1.0, and it's just like a real, it's just an